everyone, it's Lori, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about one of the new updates in Adobe Photoshop 2024. I'm going to talk to you specifically about the new AI generative fill. Now, if you are like me at all, you may be a little nervous or questioning this new technology or maybe just not thinking that it applies to your photography work. And while at some levels it doesn't apply to mine either, there are some ways that we can use this new technology to improve our editing flow, our editing time, and our overall editing results. So I want to jump in and show you a couple images this morning and just tell you how I think this technology will help and um, how I'm going to use it in my workflow. So let's get started. So first, if you have not done your update, you want to update to Adobe Photoshop 2024. There are lots of new features. There's lots of buzz about it. You can go to Adobe's site and read lots of information. What this is going to do is give you the AI generative fill, generative expand, and some other updates that are available. So today we're just going to talk about the generative fill. Now, first thing I want to do is make sure you have your contextual bar open. So if you do not see that, you can go to Window, Contextual Task Bar. I like to keep mine pinned up to the top right corner. To do that, you can click on these three dots and pin your bar. You can also hide the bar if you're not going to use it. Maybe you're editing some images and don't need it. You can always hide it. All right, so to jump in, let me show you what happens when we use this new feature. So this is an image where I wanted to get rid of these extra flowers that are just kind of distracting from this gorgeous butterfly. Now, before Photoshop 2024, I would have used the remove tool to remove these, and then I would have worked with the clone tool and some blur filters to fix this background. It probably would have taken me four or five steps, but with the new generative fill, I was able to do it in really two, two clicks. I probably could have got by with one. You can see this is the generative fill layer that was created, and this is the second one that I did. Now, I want to show you a couple examples this morning, and then I'll walk you through exactly the steps of how to do it. So let's look at a second example, which I was overwhelmingly <laughs> Just so happy with the results for this. I did change the blend mode, but I'll, I'll walk you through that. So this is the image before. So these were some little anemone flowers that were out blooming in my garden. And I shot this entire scene, but the light and the colors behind it are just not pretty. So what I did is I made my selection and then I used the generative fill. I told the AI to put in a soft pink meadow and this is what I got and I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now if I had done this adding a texture or using paint brushes it would have taken me possibly up to an hour 30 minutes to an hour. This was one click one one notice right here um, with the typing in the words clicking generate and this is what I got. Now the beauty of this feature is it adds a layer here. I can change the opacity. So I can bring that down and soften it. This would be more in line with what I would want for this image. And this looks like something that I've done in my previous workflows where I would add using a paintbrush, some pink color, or even adding a gradient and using a color. So it is very similar. I could have absolutely created this before Photoshop 2024 using some of the old tools, but I was able to get it in one step today using the AI generative fill. All right, let's look at another example. So this is an example where I shot this bouquet of flowers just outside, and there's nothing wrong with this image, but I thought it would be fun to see if I told the AI technology that I wanted a kitchen window on just the background, would it, would it deliver? And I do like the outcome. Now, when you use this feature, you're going to get three selections. And this was the selection that I liked the best. Still needs a little um, straightening over here, but that's something that I could work on. 
All right. Another way that I have used this technology is to add a sky. So we know that we can do sky replacement, but sky replacement is a little limiting and it does um, only have so many skies. You don't have as many options. So I had this shot and of course it was just a really boring, um, boring gray sky day. It was a stormy, um, a stormy day, but the clouds were just really almost thick like fog. So I went in and told the AI technology to give me a blue sky with rain clouds. And this is what I got. Now I did lower the opacity on this image as well. I felt like it blended better. And so that's the beauty of this technology is you still have the ability to do anything you want with this layer. All right, so those are three, three different ways that I would use generative fill. Now, you can use generative fill to add people onto the beach area. I could add a boat. I could add um, sunlight in the sky. There's all kinds of things you can do if you are trying to create a composite or maybe you're doing a marketing flyer. So you absolutely can use AI in those ways. But I think for myself and those of you that subscribe to my channel, those aren't typically the things that we're doing. So I wanted to show you the ways that you can use this technology to really speed up your workflow. It's basically taking steps that we've done in the past and it's allowing us to do them much faster. So let's walk through these images together. I'm going to show you exactly how to use this new technology. All right, so we'll start with this image. Now, I do want to give a disclaimer. Every time you come in and regenerate, you can tell I've done this uh, three, five, a bunch of different times, you will get a different outcome. So it does regenerate and try to continuously give you a different look and feel. So it is hard to replicate what you had in the past. So if you if you get something you like, I would encourage you to save it. And then, of course, uh, save that layer. You can always try um, different ones. OK, so let's jump in and get started. So I'm on this layer. And what we have to do first is we have to make a selection. Now, there are lots of ways to make a selection. You can use the lasso tool is the most common. You can also use the rectangular marquee. So for this example, I'm going to use the marquee because it pretty much follows this marquee area. So I'm going to just come in and select this area. You can see right away in my um, toolbar here, Generative Fill pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, we could type something in here, but I don't want to do that. I'm not wanting to add anything to this image. I'm just wanting it to fill with something similar to what is already in the image. So I'm going to click Generate, and we're going to let it process. And, oh, it's saying that I don't have good internet. All right, folks, I'm going to pause and come right back and let's troubleshoot this. I'll be right back. Right again and was able to get it to work. So here's the first example. You can see the variations right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the second. And that that's pretty nice. That looks legitimate like it would be out in the garden. And that looks pretty nice as well. Um, so I would decide if I was happy with these. Now, remember, this is creating a layer for you. It's also creating a mask. So you can see that mask. And now we still have our blend option. So I'm actually going to um, probably keep the opacity because I want it to hide those flowers. And um, I like that. I'd like it to be a little bit softer. So I'd have a choice here. I could generate it again. I could also just go ahead and add a little bit of blur filter to this if I wanted. So you have options to continue editing. But I think overall, um, it did a nice, a nice job. This may even be the one that I would go with. So at this point, I could go ahead and continue working and editing with this image. All right, so let's go look at this um, soft pink, and I'll show you how I generated this one. Now, this one's a little bit different because we need to make a selection for our subject. Now, you have up here in your contextual bar, select subject, but I want to show you a new trick. So the new trick is if you go to one of the quick selection tools, 
you will have select subject up at the top. And so I encourage you to click on that. There is now this cloud detailed results. You want to select that option. The beauty of that is it is AI technology and it is going to make a really wonderful select subject. So let's go ahead and collect, select subject, click that button, and look what an amazing job it did. It did select every single thing in the subject. It's beautifully masked, um, and I can just move forward from here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to invert that selection. So now that we have it inverted, we can see the marching ants along the outside of the image. Now I can go do my generative fill. It is going to impact the background and not my subject. So I'm going to click on that generative fill. Now this time I actually want to tell it what I want. And what I want is a soft pink meadow. So we'll see what it does this time. Again, we have what we did before or what I did before you join me. So I'm going to click generate and it's going to process. Now you will always get three variations. And again, you can always tell it you want it to generate again if you're not happy with the selections. So we'll see what it comes up with this time. It's fun to just kind of see what the computer pulls together. But again, that was really um, two clicks. So it did a nice job again. I'm going to look at all three selections. And let's see. Oh, this one is very similar to the first one. So um, I like that one a lot. It's a little, little pink, but we can adjust that. And let's see this third option. Oh, that one's very nice. It's pulling in some yellows, some different tones. So if I selected that one um, on this layer, I could come in now and reduce the opacity. I could also keep the opacity up and even change the blend mode. So if I wanted to do soft light, that's going to bring in some of the original um, let's see if we did screen, you can see what that does. That is also bringing in some of the original color. Um, darken is going to darken that background. So you can continue to use your blend modes and we can also lower the opacity. So I would definitely want to lower this. And I think that looks really nice. Again, before um, having this generative fill, I would have had to select subject. It would have taken me a lot longer. I would have had to use brushes or even um, gradient filters to get this look. So I am really happy. And this is probably the number one way that I will use this technology. OK, let's go over to the kitchen window image. And I think you can by now probably figure out what we're going to do here. I'm going to go up again and select cloud detail, select my subject. And this would work the same if you're shooting with people. So we've got a nice mask. Now I'm going to invert that mask. So now I'm going to be working with the background. I'm going to click Generative Fill. And I'm going to say Kitchen Window. Could also do Kitchen Table. I didn't try that one, but let's just go ahead and stick with the Kitchen Window. And we'll see what it produces this time around. I've tried this one a couple times. And again, you'll get three variations and it works pretty fast. So I haven't had um, haven't had many issues with it taking too long. It processes probably in under a minute. All right. So this is a nice one. We can definitely tell that it looks like a window. Let's look at option number two. And option number two looks pretty nice. Looks like there's some some stuff on the window. I think that might be a little distracting. And then we'll go look at option number three. So these are definitely different than what I'd gotten previously. So this one has that window edge and a little bit right here. It's not as good as the, um, the one that I had done previously. Let's go back to number one. And I think this would definitely be um, the, the option that I would choose. So I like this. I even like it better than the original, which is just sitting out in grass. I think this really tells a nice story of a still life image and it it works for me. There may be some cleanup that I want to do. Um, it definitely looks like there is a window behind here and I think it did a nice job. All right, so the next option is doing 
the um, sky. So let's go to our image. I'm going to get my properties removed here. Now we want to make our selection. And so what I want to do for this selection is I'm going to use the rectangular object selection tool. So I'm going to come over and just drag this over and overlap the trees a little bit. And now Photoshop is going to mask that. So see what a beautiful line we have. So now we are masked right here in the sky. You can see how great it did. Again, I used over here in the quick selections, I used the object selection mask. Now we're going to click generative fill and I'm going to tell it I want um, a blue sky with rain clouds and we're going to click generate. Now, currently, you may have heard some talk online about the AI technology requiring a fee. Um, there is more information to come on the Adobe site. That process starts in November, where each Adobe user, I think you will have a certain amount of credits where you can use this technology. And then there will be options to purchase additional, but much more to come on that. I don't have all the details for you today, but you will want to read about that. I think for my use and probably yours, you won't be using it um, so much that it's going to cost you any money. So um, this did an excellent job this time. I actually like this outcome better than what I got the first time around. Now you do have to watch. Sometimes it will do things to your image. You can see these trees look really strange in option two. And now we'll go to option three. And that one looks really nice. So I think that one did a good job. But I think option one, option one is absolutely what I would go with. My buildings look good. My trees look good. Now, if you felt like you needed to work and mask, you've got a mask right here. So we could come over and grab our brush and we could bring back any of, we need to be on black. We could bring back some of these trees if we felt like the edge was a little off we could come in and clean that up yeah it did some things to the building so i'm just gonna clean that up and there we go we've got our original image so we can see our original image looked really nice and neat at the top of those buildings and oh we can see now it added something blue right here so i'm just gonna mask that off we don't need that so that is also the beauty of this um feature is you've still got all the masking ability that you had. So those are four different ways that I will be using this technology from time to time. Not always, but if I want to do a possible sky replacement, if I want to make something change the background, changing a distracting background or adding some beautiful color and cleaning up a background where I need to remove something and it's going to be quicker to use the generative feature. So I hope you'll play around with this. It's pretty easy to use. The biggest thing is making your selection. So think about which tool is going to support your selection. And then once you make that, you can go to the um, generate panel and make your fill adjustments. If you have questions or want some additional information about this new technology, leave me a note in the comments. And thanks so much for watching.